Good morning, everyone. What's going on? Hopefully you're all doing well, and welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. I am DSP, and I think the camera is zoomed in. The camera is zoomed in. What happened here? I didn't zoom it out last night after I did the uh, daily wrap. Likely because I was so pooped. I actually stayed around late last night. For those who were not around, uh, I stayed about eh, roughly a half an hour later than usual on the late stream. <clears throat> For good reason. We'll talk about that in a moment. But good morning, everyone, and welcome to the pre-stream podcast. Today is Saturday, the 25th of June, 2022. And yes... I'm using a similar border that I did on yesterday's pre-stream podcast for good reason. I'm trying to represent Capcom here today, as this is the day two of my coverage of the Capcom Fighting Collection that just came out yesterday, okay? <clears throat> so, Capcom Fighting Collection. It is time to talk about it, because I have played it for a day, and I have a good amount to say about the collection, I feel, for, especially for those of you who are fighting game fans and maybe you've been wondering if this collection would be worth your while and uh you know is it worth the hefty price tag because forty dollars which is the cost of the capcom fighting collection pretty pricey for a retro throwback game um i think a lot of people would agree and so we're going to talk about it today we're going to talk about the features <clears throat> i'm going to talk about my experiences playing the game offline which is what i did for yesterday's main gameplay stream and then I'm going to talk about the experiences online last night and the differences between them because I played it on two separate consoles and had pretty much two completely different experiences. Um, also, <clears throat> today, we are throwing a monkey wrench into the schedule. And what I mean by that is that originally today, this, the, the idea was the daytime stream was still going to be offline content just like it was yesterday where we were going to check out um, more of the arcade modes of the game. In particular, today we were going to do the games that I hadn't ever played before, like uh, Red Earth and Cyberbots. <clears throat> and then maybe I'll do a little bit of Gem Fighter Minimix, etc. Because yesterday I went through the entire history of Darkstalkers, plus I did one run in Hyper Street Fighter 2 Arcade uh, Anniversary Edition, excuse me. And so we were going to do uh, the other stuff today. But, but... After last night, all right, I've changed it up, and I think we're going to do something completely different today because I'm actually very excited, and I am craving, craving online competition. Like, after getting playing it last night, well, I'll explain this in a moment because we're going to go through what happened last night and everything, okay? All right, so anyway, um, how you guys doing? hope you guys are doing well, and I hope that you guys are uh, having a good weekend so far. Okay, um, I know that outside of my streams, there's a lot of drama going on in the real world. Trust me, I dealt with it a lot yesterday. <laughs> uh, behind the scenes and everything of the streams. I did my best yesterday on the stream to try to control said drama because this is not a drama zone. This is not a place where it's about talking about politics and things like that. Every once in a while, <clears throat> if I so feel the need, I will do that. But, Yesterday was definitely not one of those days. And so I'm happy that we were able to dive into gaming, right? And kind of separate ourselves from all of the nonsense and the drama yesterday. And I, I definitely want to do that again today. So I'm just going to forewarn everyone. This stream is not a political stream. This stream is not a place to sit here and, and, and try to derail what we're doing with talk of things that you know are going to stir up problems, right? We all know right now. There's a lot of political shit going on in the United States. It's very dividing. People are at each other's throats. People are in the streets protesting. It's crazy, all right? Um, <clears throat> and I don't even really care which side of the issue you're on, or more if you're more like me, maybe you're in the middle, torn between, and you're like, wow, everyone's just an asshole, <laughs> right? Maybe. Maybe you find yourself torn between two political sides all the time. You're like, why can't people just fucking be reasonable to each other and stop with this insane nonsense. It's like a bunch of kids on a schoolyard, you know, throwing rocks at each other. But anyway, um, I'm not here to deal with that shit. Being honest, you know, I was anticipating this collection for years. 
the collection is hyped. It finally comes out yesterday. I'm like, finally, on my streams, we can do something different with fighting games instead of that old 30th anniversary collection that's a piece of shit. And let me tell you, which we're going to talk about in a moment, the online play of this game is great. It is really good. I had a very pleasant experience playing this game online last night. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and I was so excited. And then what happens? This political shit. Everyone's got to be arguing. All anyone wants to talk about all yesterday's. I'm like, oh. So tired. I really am tired of the bullshit. It's very exhausting. Now, as you guys know, I have tr strived to try to make my streams a safe haven from that shit. During the pandemic, this was a place where you could come to relax and not have to constantly hear everyone blabbing about the pandemic. Instead, I was like, let's unplug from that and let's just have fun with games, right? I strive to be here on a regular basis, okay? Um... And to give you a steady schedule of gameplay content and fun. Also, you know, podcasts, react content, now that I'm doing that. I'm trying to give you a variety of entertainment so that you can have a place to not be stressed out. You know what I'm saying? I don't want anyone to come to my stream and be stressed out. That's the opposite. You're coming to my stream to enjoy yourself, to relax, right? Right, exactly. So... That's that's what I'm trying to do here today. Please understand that, all right? Now, please understand that if you come here and you try to derail this stream with talk of that, you will likely be moderated, all right? And it's not that I'm on one side of the issue or the other. It's not that I agree or disagree with what you're saying. It's that this has nothing to do with my stream. You understand that, right? Like, this is supposed to be the place you're coming to relax and unplug from that. Not to now be even further inundated with more of it. Okay? Quite frankly, I don't care what your opinion is on any of these political subject matters right now. What I want to know is, do you like fighting games? <laughs> Would you like to see someone play fighting games? Would you like to ask questions about fighting games? Would you like to request that I use a character in a fighting game? Would you like to have a fun discussion about fighting games? That's, you know, what I'm doing on the stream. You see? So, please uh, understand that. And, you know, I know that we have some moderators here today. And by the way, I would like to give a special shout out to Shui, who has returned to the streams to help with moderation. Shui actually was helping for a short time last year as a moderator, but then stepped down, but is back now to help out. We need the help because if you guys haven't noticed, there have been a lot of idiots coming in here making troll accounts and, and tons of them um, trying to abuse YouTube's chat system. And usually it's not that big of a deal, but man, it's annoying when it hits. So Shui is, is uh, 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 walking in here to help. And I just want to say in advance, thank you, Shui, for your help. And everyone, please be respectful of Shui, who's going to be doing their best here to try to help out on the channel. Okay. Okay. So, please, no derailing of today's stream or streams, because double stream day, with this talk of politics shit. All right. Again. I'm not against or for anything. I'm not against or for your opinion. I don't agree or disagree with you. I just don't care. This is a fighting game stream. It's meant to be. And I'm not going to sit here and be completely derailed by people trying to cause drama. Fair enough? Okay. I'm sure right now some people are watching this. They're like, hallelujah. Thank God there's somewhere I could go out to hear this shit all day. I know. I'm with you. You know? <clears throat> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Saturday, the 25th of June. Let us talk about the schedule for the rest of the week, and then we will talk about Capcom Fighting Collection. So today's schedule is Capcom Fighting Collection all day long. Originally, the plan was I was going to play offline arcade modes on this stream of, like I said, Red Earth, Cyberbots, maybe Gem Fighter Minimix, and then we were going to do online play on the late stream. But based off of last night, which we're going to talk about in a moment, I am absolutely craving multiplayer, all right? So, what do you guys think? Would you guys prefer to see me jump right in and play people online today in, in you know variety of games? You know, Vampire Savior, uh, Gem Fighter Minimix, and uh, Hyper Street Fighter 2, our Anniversary Edition? Or do you want to see me do the arcade modes, right? I, I would assume people probably want to see more multiplayer. That's what I'm thinking, but I don't know. I want to gauge interest. I want to see what you guys have to say. So far, five people said multiplayer. 
I get the feeling the opinion is going to be do some multiplayer. That's what I think. Um, so anyway, we'll talk about this in a moment about my experience with the multiplayer last night. Okay, but <clears throat> we will. Uh, we'll see what happens. We may be doing <clears throat> actual multiplayer all day long today. We may. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right. So anyway, today all day long I'm playing this collection. All right. Now today I'm playing it on PlayStation Five. Yesterday. I spent the vast majority of the day on the Xbox version, which was neat. I was unlocking a ton of achievements for playing uh, the Darkstalkers games and beating them on Xbox. Um, and I did do one singular run through Hyper Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Edition with World Warrior Zangief. Boy, that was a trip, because World Warrior Zangief is so different from how he is in the other games. Um, it's before they nerfed him. So, yeah, I had a good time, and we got a lot of achievement points. And then I went online... And the first hour online was a major pain in the ass. On Xbox, I could barely find anyone to play. And that includes both ranked match, casual matches, and lobbies. It just seems like not many people bought this collection on Xbox. I played the same guy like five times. Because we were the only people we could find. <laughs> like, wow, what the hell? Okay? <clears throat> but then, after an hour of that, it was like pulling teeth. So people said, why don't you just switch to, to PS5 on a whim and just see what happens? We had nonstop competition, nonstop matches, and every match was fluid. So I was like, wow, you want to talk about night and day experience? It seems like more than double the people bought this on PlayStation than on Xbox. So that's what we're doing today. We already were going to do PlayStation all day today anyway, because I bought both versions of the game. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do today is PlayStation Online. Now, this game, as I found out yesterday, has a lobby system that is passworded. That means... I can set up a lobby, I can put password protection on it, and you guys, the viewers, can exclusively join said lobby and play against me. Now the question is, how many of my viewers own this game? Right? Because I don't know. I don't know the answer. Also, supposedly, this game has the ability to kick people from lobbies. So let's say I create a lobby, I password protect it, and we get some piece of shit troll coming in there doing nasty stuff or not readying up or whatever. We can just kick them. And then we move on positively and say, fuck that. It's completely the opposite <clears throat> of the experience of the Street Fighter 30th anniversary collection over the last four years. In a nutshell, they put effort in. They actually tried. They have different stages. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they actually gave a shit when they made this collection. It's, like, remarkable. So... I'm excited for multiplayer today. I think what we will do, we will start up with random multiplayer. I'll try to do ranked matches, casual matches, see if there's any lobbies to join. Do it that way at first. And if we keep getting success, great. If it slows down, or for some reason I can't find people, then I will um, do my best to maybe set up a private lobby and see if people want to join. Okay? So that's what we're going to do today. All right? Hopefully there's a good player base that you would think during the day on a Saturday, would likely have more players than when the game just came out last night on Friday. Maybe more people saw people play it and want to buy it and play it today. And again, it seems like PlayStation is the biggest player base for the game right now. So I guess we'll see what happens today. Hopefully, we can get some good matches in. We'll have some good fun with the game, okay? So all day long, Capcom Fighting Collection today. <clears throat> now, tomorrow... We take a break. Tomorrow, we swing back to Sonic Origins, which I'm excited for. I played it uh, two days ago, and we played through all of Sonic the Hedgehog 1, and then we played through most of Sonic CD. I'm really enjoying the collection. You guys are too. I mean, you guys really seem to like it. Attendance was good, and support was good, and everyone seemed to have a good time with it. So I hope that you guys will join me tomorrow for Sonic Origins. And remember, we have a stretch goal for Sonic Origins whenever I play it. If we raise $200 in tips, which is a, a stretch tips goal... I will put on the coveted Sonic the Hedgehog hat. Didn't happen yet, but maybe it will tomorrow. We'll have to see. Okay. All right. That's absolutely disgusting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um. Then, on Sunday night, all right, it will be more Skyrim. All right. Skyrim After Hours, in particular. Um. And it's going to be the end game 
meaning we're going go to go do the final Dragon Priest mask quest to try to get them all so we can finish up the Dragon Masks quest line. And then it's just the end of the story, and that's it. I'm not dilly-dallying anymore with this game. I've been playing it for six months. We did all of the meaningful content of the game. Yes, there's a few odds and ends. There's a few <clears throat> uh, missed quests, I'm sure. There's some quests I can't even complete because the game glitched. At this point, I don't care. I've done enough. It's time to end Skyrim so we can give it a good send-off, and then we can move on to other projects. I have so many other games I would love to play, and I need to get to them, and Skyrim has to conclude. So we're going to do our best. Tomorrow night, we may beat it. If not, maybe one more stream, okay? Now, Monday and Tuesday, <clears throat> I'm leaving completely open, all right? What I'm thinking is, Monday and Tuesday, we can do a balance between... Sonic Origins, and more Capcom Fighting Collection, okay? And the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, which I was playing last week and put on hold because of these new releases coming out this week, um, and Skyrim. So if we beat Skyrim tomorrow night, great, then it's done and we can focus on the other games. If not, then likely I'll do a final stream of Skyrim Tuesday night, which is my final stream of the week before my break, um, and that would leave us with three other streams, two daytime streams and a night stream. So maybe... One day we do Castlevania with Capcom Fighting Collection on the late stream on Monday, and then maybe Tuesday we do Sonic Origins. Or if you guys are absolutely demanding Sonic Origins every day, we could just do that. I'm okay with that. Whatever you guys want. I'm, I'm open to options. Whatever you guys are thinking, I'm down for it, all right? I'm not limited to anything in particular. Um, <clears throat> and we'll be playing these games over the course of the next week. Um, next week there is one new release. In the Cuphead DLC, the, the Delicious Last Course, likely I'll beat it within two streams. People are saying it's only four hours long, but keep in mind, it's a very hard game, and I haven't played it in, like, six years or five years or whatever. So, likely, I'm just going to suck at it. I'm going to have to get caught back up on how to play it, right? So, I uh, I definitely am looking forward to it, but I don't know how much, how, how much lengthy gameplay it's going to have, you know. Um, outside of that... <clears throat> there's just not a lot going on in the realm of gaming until the middle of July. So we're going to be doing some special things come July. First of all, the Viewer's Choice event. In the next few days, I'm going to sit down and tally up your nominations for the Viewer's Choice event. I'm going to turn those into a poll, and you guys are going to start voting. You'll probably vote for about a week, and that'll determine what game is the Viewer's Choice game, and that's going to start in early July. Okay. In addition, we have a React marathon coming up it's going to be a day-long event where i react to some kind of content on the internet of which soon we're going to be determining and i'm sure we'll start talking about it maybe even do polls about it we'll see uh in addition there'll be a feasting with the king during that day and in addition to that there's also going to be a special 30 man over the top rope fantasy battle royale in wwe 2k22 only the second of which i've done this year you guys really liked the one that i did uh about a month and a half ago now um, for a different marathon event. <clears throat> so this should be fun. It'll be a good variety of fun stuff to do in a marathon setting. Okay. That's coming up in early July. Okay. In addition to that, I had even forgot about this. Ask the King is coming up. Are you guys aware? Ask the King is coming up in early July. It's my bi monthly QA show. If you haven't yet, I urge you post up your questions for Ask the King. You can do so by typing exclamation point Ask the King in the stream chat right now. It'll bring up the command link. You click on it. It goes to my forums, uh, dspgaming.com. And you can immediately uh, post up your questions for the show. It's, it's a very, very strong chance your question will be answered if you post it up on the forums. There are other methods that you can use to post up, but those are very, very slight chance. Like, for example, posting on my Twitter the day of, only a couple people get selected for that. If you post up on my forums, a bunch of those questions get selected for the show. Okay. In addition to that, I think I need to post up a members-only poll for Ask the King. In fact, I think I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> let's do that right now so I don't forget. Okay, let's go to the community tab of my, my channel page. Let's make a members-only post. And say, hello, channel members. This thread... <clears throat> is where you can post up your questions for the next episode of Ask the King, my Q&A. What the hell just happened? 
I, Q, and A show. You have a very increased chance of getting your question answered. So please post up here and good luck. FYI, the show is currently tentatively scheduled for early July 2022. All right. So if you are a channel member, all 552 of you, all right, and climbing or dropping, I don't think we're going to have any sharp drops. We did have some gifted memberships last month, but they were kind of gradual. So as long as we have a little bit of gradual memberships this month, I don't think we're going to see a sharp drop. We saw the sharp drop already. We were at 630 something, 632, and <clears throat> dropped down to like 500, and then we, now we've come back up. So anyway, if you're a channel member, go to the main channel page of DSP Gaming, go to the community tab, and there there will be a members only post where you can post up your questions for Ask the King. Okay? So even though there's not a lot going on in early July new release wise, we've got a, a viewer's choice playthrough that's going to happen. We've got a react marathon that's going to happen. And there's an episode of Ask the King. Okay? So we've got a lot going on coming up. And I'm excited for that because it'll be a good variety. We're going to be playing all the games I'm playing now, wrapping some of those up, doing some new stuff. Of course, there's opportunity for new things to be added in as well. For example, I have the PlayStation Plus premium level. Do you guys want to see some more retro games from PlayStation Plus? I'd be down for that. Okay? Um, anything like that right now. You know, uh, by the way, I still have Game Pass. I know we don't talk about it that much because PlayStation Plus kind of trumped it at this point. But I have Game Pass. And if you guys wanted to see me uh, do something on game from Game Pass, I'd be down for that. Um, I wonder how many of you would like to see me play MotorStorm Apocalypse. Raise your hands right now. If you enjoy seeing me do the intro stage to Mortar Storm Apocalypse streamed over PlayStation Plus Premium and you think a throwback playthrough of that game would be fun, raise your hand right now. For the first time ever, people actually did it intelligently. I can't believe it. You guys actually made me look stupid because usually the joke is I say, I can't see your hands. Put your hands down. What are you doing? This is the internet. People actually just started doing emotes. Hand emotes. There's one. Uh, someone did a hand. Someone did me waving. Someone did a person with their hand up. They, you guys actually got you got me. <laughs> I can't make that joke anymore. You completely trumped me now. Now I can't. Oh, my God. Wow. So some people are interested in it. Some are not, but some are. <clears throat> okay. It's just a suggestion. Okay. This is what I'm saying is we have options now. Now that we have downtime, there's a lot going. You know, we're about to finish Skyrim. So now we open up the realm and possibility for another RPG. What RPG would you like to see me do? Earthbound, which I'm dying to do, or maybe a different RPG, right? As long as it's not super lengthy, you know, <clears throat> I'd be down for it. Or uh, would you like to see something completely different, right? From, from Game Pass, from PlayStation Plus Premium. Let's brainstorm. Let's figure out what people want to see, what's viable, what people will watch. Maybe you want a survival horror game. Maybe you want, I don't know. Another children's game. Maybe you want to see me play Toy Story 3. I don't know why you want me to see me play Toy Story 2 and 3 back to back. That'd be kind of silly. But some people have been requesting that. So. Let's brainstorm. Alright? This next week will be packed. We'll, we'll be good. But once July hits, that's when we're really going to start to have to think about, gee, what do we want to do now? Right? Okay. Fair enough. Um... All right, so that's the schedule basically going on right now. Um, not much else to talk about in that regard. Thank you all for your support. Um, now, one thing I will say is we're about to talk about Capcom Fighting Collection, okay? I'm about to play this again all day today. I know that many of you are fans of fighting games. You wouldn't be here to watch me play fighting games if you weren't. But I have to ask, please support them. I love retro fighting games. I grew up playing them in arcades. It's a, a, a formative part of my life as well as... A really cool nostalgic vibe for me. When I get to play games like this, I'm gonna feel like I'm in an arcade playing against people back in the day when my quarter up, the air conditioner blasting, grabbing a soda from the soda machine, taking a piss, and then seeing someone run from bullies and hide in the ceiling tiles of the arcade. If you don't understand that reference, you must not have watched my content over the years because I've told that story. It actually happened. So anyway. And no, it wasn't me, it was someone else. Um anyway. 
the point I'm making here is I absolutely love this. I hope that you guys do too. <clears throat> but I do need it so, to be supported. And to give you some perspective here, yesterday on the first stream of Capcom Fighting Collection, which was the offline gameplay, um, someone gifted a ton of memberships. That was awesome. Thank you so much to Trill One, who came in here and dropped a big membership bomb. Like 30 plus people got memberships and really enjoyed it. And obviously that helps a lot. <clears throat> Super Chat. It was actually a good amount of them. Thank you for that. Tips were on the slower side for the first stream, okay? Then on the late stream, all right, basically there was no support except for tips, but the tips were good because, of course, longtime fighting game fan Jax Raxer came in and dropped a giant tip. If it weren't for Jax Raxer last night, actually the stream would have been incredibly slow for support. So I think that the point you see me making here is I love doing this, and this is something different. I don't always play fighting games like this. Usually it's like once a week on a late night. Um... Since this is the premiere of a new collection and we're testing it out, we're, we're seeing what's viable, what's not. Is it better than the last collection? Yes, it's way better already. But you see what I'm saying? We're giving it a shot. Please support this in any way you can. Whether it means just watching and liking the stream. That helps. If you're watching the videos on demand on YouTube, liking the videos, leaving comments about what you're seeing, which some people did last night, and I really appreciated that because I almost never get comments on my fighting game stuff, and it was nice to see people actually comment about the fighting game stuff and, and care about it for once. That was nice. Um, or if you want to go above and beyond, you want to become a channel member or maybe gift a membership to a fellow chatter who needs a membership, that helps. Super chats, super stickers, that's tremendous. Tipping, huge of course. Tipping helps a ton. And... You know, we have the rewards in effect for tips at 50 bucks, gunner glasses, at $100 a hat. Now, yesterday I wore the bison hat, but we barely played Street Fighter. It ended up being most of the matches with Darkstalkers. So today, if I do hit the hat goal of $100 in tips, I will do a poll, and the bison hat will be in the running, but there'll be other hats eligible as well, okay? And of course, at 150 bucks, a vest of your choice. Now, yesterday we wore... What vest did I wear yesterday? The beige vest, right? Yes, I wore the beige vest on the late stream. So that would be out of the running. And previous before that, we wore the platinum vest. So those two are out of the running for today. But all the other vests, like the gold vest, the camo vest, the denim, those will be in the running for today. Okay? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, again, please support fighting games and by the way don't worry if you're not a fan of fighting games you're like man i'm bummed out because phil's still playing them so much i'm not doing this forever this is the only second day we're doing it as a major stream or uh, the major all day thing after this it won't be all day fighting games anymore it'll always be a balance if i do this it'll be like a late stream we'll do some multiplayer or whatever we're not it's not going to be all day every day it's just two days for the launch of the game okay cool okay let's talk about the capcom fighting collection Okay, so first of all, yesterday you guys voted on the first stream for me to go through the history of Darkstalkers. So we did. I went through all five Darkstalkers games. Darkstalkers 1. Darkstalkers 2 is called Night Warriors or Vampire Hunter, depending on the region. Darkstalkers 3 is called Vampire Savior. Darkstalkers 4. And here's where it kind of starts to get iffy. And a lot of people get confused. There is no Darkstalkers 4. There's no Darkstalkers 5. What they did is in Japan, they made two spin-off games for arcades to try to extend the length of the life of Darkstalkers. Even though there were no new games being made, what they were were <clears throat> essentially like tweaks to the game. So for example, there is one called Darkstalkers Vampire Hunter 2. It's supposed to be a sequel to Vampire Hunter or Night Warriors, but it's not really. It's Vampire Savior, and they take out the new character. So there's no Queen Bee, no BB Hood, no... Jetta, and no, um, who's the fourth new character? Now I'm having a brain fart. They take out the four new characters that were added, and instead, they put back in the boss characters and the characters from Night Warrior slash Vampire Hunter. So back are Huitzel or Phobos, Pyrin the boss, the alien, Donovan the, the demon hunter, and, uh, Shenko or Lele, the Chinese ghost vampire preacher thing. Okay, so, I don't know why... They took characters out to add in new characters. You would think if you're going to do an, a, an expansion or an update to your existing game, what you would do is just add more characters. It's not like... Like, look at the progression of Street Fighter 2. In the original Street Fighter 2 World Warrior, there's eight characters. Then in Champion Edition, they add the bosses, four more. 
Then in Super, they add four more. It's not like they said, we have eight, then we add four, then we remove the four to add four more, but then we'll have another version later where we add in some of the bosses and some of the new characters and other characters are removed. It's really weird what they did with the Darkstalkers franchise. So Vampire Hunter 2 brings back the boss characters and the characters from Vampire Hunter 1, but removes the new characters from Vampire Savior. Then there's Vampire Savior 2 that adds back in the new characters, but then removes two of the classic characters. No more John Talbane the werewolf and no more Sasquatch. Why? It's so weird that they did this, okay? So it's very confusing because people are trying to play these games and they can't figure out what's the version I should be playing. The answer to that is simple. Vampire Savior. Vampire Savior was the last official worldwide release of Darkstalkers. The other ones were only ever Japan only or console only, but they were never worldwide big releases or hits and they were never really played in competitive circles. Vampire Savior to this day remains the final major competitive Darkstalkers game. So, if you're looking to play the game online competitively, you should be playing Vampire Savior, okay? So, that was fun. We went through all five versions of the games, okay? Had a great time. And it was good to see the history of Darkstalkers unfolding because I couldn't really remember the changes and things between the, the, the different versions of Darkstalkers. And it was nice to experiment a little bit with them and play through each one, see how the endings were different and all of that, right? Then we had a little bit of extra time, so I did Hyper Street Fighter 2 uh, Anniversary Edition. And man, dude, that game is fucking tough. The AI in that game is so ridiculous. Reading your inputs, cheating, outright cheats. What the AI does, <clears throat> it does things the game you can't do in the real game. It'll do links of moves that don't link when you're playing the game yourself. It'll do a move, like for example, DJ has a move. If you charge down, you press up plus punch. He rapidly does this upwards uppercut fist, and it hits multiple times if you're up close. In the real game, once you hit once or twice, the enemy pushes away and it stops hitting. Okay? Um, the computer, when it does it, the move has a vacuum property that doesn't work in the real game, and it hits you four to five times, and it will take your entire energy bar. Makes no sense. It doesn't work like that. If it did, DJ would be one of the best characters in the game, but it doesn't work like that. So it literally reinvents the game and cheats <clears throat> you see it cheats to win it's ridiculous it has no charge flash moves or excuse me no charge charge moves like a walk-up flash kick is what i meant to say guile can literally walk forward and then do a flash kick it's a charge move how do you do that cheat it the game does this like crazy so me, I was just playing it on the default difficulty, which is like like four stars out of nine or something like that. It was ridiculously hard, <clears throat> and I had to replay a bunch of times. I had to continue in order to actually get a win. <clears throat> so, get rid of these idiots who are fucking trolling in the chat. They're being stupid. Um, so it was very fun because I was playing with World Warrior Zangief, and it was a good a good experience because I was like, wow, he's so different from the other versions of Zangief that I've played with for years and years. It's very fun to play the old old one. And what I mean what I mean by this is when you play as the older versions of the characters, they retain the properties from said game. So when you're playing with Street Fighter 2, the World Warrior Zangief, he's so different from the other Zangiefs. His spinning pile driver does like a third of your energy bar. It's like, whoa, it's crazy. <clears throat> so I had a lot of fun with that. And I'm actually excited to try out older versions of characters and stuff online and see how they hang. Okay. Anyway, that was fun. Then we went to online play for the late stream yesterday. And here's really where the eye-opening stuff started happening. Okay. First of all, I don't think I had a laggy match last night. And I played it for about two and a half hours. Every match seemed responsive. Every match, for the most part, had responsive controls. I was getting moves that I could not do in the 30th anniversary collection. I was consistently getting Fei Long's chicken wing move which is his flipping kick move, um, Cammy's rolls that, you know, go into the grapple, the air throw. I was getting them all. I was like, wait a minute. These are moves that I can barely get in the 30th anniversary collection, and they're coming out every time something gives here. And, it, you know, it just shows. When you have good netcode, 
your entire gameplay experience can be changed. And it's like, it's like night and day. I was like, I feel like I'm in an arcade playing. This is excellent. I can do all my moves, you know? If anything, I kind of wish now that netcode was put into the 30th anniversary collection because I would love that netcode for Third Strike. Third Strike is such a different game when you can parry everything. When you can time and parry everything, the game is such an awesome game. At high level, it's like parry everything, parry everything. Everyone's parrying everything. And it just looks so amazing and the, the skill level is off the charts. And you can't get that with an online third strike to this point because the netcode hasn't been good enough. So maybe they actually will take the netcode from this game and put it into other Capcom games. I would be thrilled if they did that because the netcode seems to be outstanding right now, okay? Now, we started off playing on Xbox. <clears throat> and I hate to say it, the experience was not great and it had nothing to do with the netcode because every time we played, it was great. The problem was there just wasn't much, many players, um, and I was trying ranked, and I when I was doing this, I would select Vampire Savior, Hyper Street Fighter Two Anniversary Edition, and Gem Fighter Mini Max. So I'd select those three games and hit Search for Ranked Matches. And sometimes I would get a match, and sometimes I would sit there for five minutes and it found nothing. <clears throat> and I'm like, wow, it's launch night of the game, and I can't find anyone to play. Like, how weird is that, right? So I was like, all right, let's do casual matches. And I did find some casual matches. However, I just kept finding the same people. Like, there was two people playing that I played, like, ten times. I was like, dude, this is ridiculous. I don't want to play the same people over and over. So now I was like, okay, let's try the lobby system. <clears throat> okay? So I tried the lobby system. And there's some lobbies. And every lobby I joined, there's only one person sitting there. Not a single lobby has two people in it. It's just one person sitting there waiting to play and hoping someone shows up. I played a few people, but it's kind of boring when you're just playing the same person over and over. So it's like, damn, this is this sucks actually. Like legit, this is not good. This is pretty disappointing if this is <clears throat> the level of competition you're going to get in a brand new fighting game, right? So I said about an hour into it and basically having a really tough time finding comp, I said, let's switch to the PlayStation. Now, I hadn't played the PlayStation version of the game yet, all right? And when we started playing on PS5, it was like the complete opposite situation. I was finding matches frequently. It was a variety of players, and we were having a good time, okay? So that was good. And, and again, the one difference, there were lobbies on PS5, but every one of them was privated because people were setting up private lobbies and password protecting them and having their friends join them, which is exactly what you should be doing in a game like this, which was lacking from the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, which is insanely stupid that it, that it was, Okay. <clears throat> So, I, I had a good time. I basically went stayed late because I was having such a good time playing on PlayStation. I played for like 90 minutes, which normally I wouldn't go late, but I was like, man, I'm having such a good time. I want to do this. So, we did. And we had a good, a good one. And what happened was, it was such a good time that I craved it. Like, what happens is when I get the bug for fighting games, I start thinking about it. I start craving it. And so, overnight, I'm thinking about, man, those matches I played last night. Oh, that was fun. You know, the Vampire Savior stuff, I'm starting to get back into it. And, man, Hyper Street Fighter 2 is really fun to play the old versions of characters. I want to play more. I'm like, man, I'm craving it. And so I'm thinking overnight, I'm like, oh, that first stream, I told everyone I was going to do offline gameplay. I got to play against the computer. Man, I want to play people online. I want to, I want to, oh, I got that bug again. You see? This is what happens. So, today, we're doing multiplayer on this stream. Seems like enough people want it. We're going to give it a shot and see if I can consistently get multiplayer today. Okay? It should be fun. Now, if I play multiplayer for a while and either it gets boring playing randoms, or if I can't find enough randoms, I will set up a lobby and password protect it, and you guys can join if people own the game, because I don't know if they do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know how many people bought this game or not. So I guess we're going to find out today firsthand, okay? We're going to test the waters and see how it goes. Fair enough? Now, I found one really weird issue with this collection on Xbox, okay? They, they screwed up the button mapping. I know that sounds weird. They, they coded it wrong. There's an actual coding error in the game. Um, They mapped it, okay, so that right bumper is actually left bumper, and left bumper is right bumper. Or it could be that right bumper is right left trigger. It's one or the other. 
they, they flipped two buttons by accident. So in the menu, it says if you press right bumper, you will get heavy punch. But then when you press it in the game, I was getting a special move. I was like, huh? Why am I getting one button special moves? With right bumper, this doesn't make any sense. Come to find out, they coded it wrong. So what you have to do is reverse the inputs for right bumper and that is either left bumper or left trigger. And so now, once I figured that out, everything worked fine. I had, to, I had to basically remap every game to be the right button layout. But I've never seen that happen before in a fighting game. I've never seen them actually absent-mindedly miscode the button mapping. I wonder how many people are playing this game with the wrong buttons and don't realize it. <laughs> really, I wonder how many people are playing the game and they're like, oh, wow, it's really cool. Every time you press Fierce Punch, you get a different special move. That's you're not supposed to happen. But I wonder how many people just aren't, aren't, they don't know any better, right, on Xbox. On PlayStation, it doesn't happen. It was fine. On PlayStation, all the buttons were correct from the get-go. So I didn't even need to remap anything. It just worked. Um, so I guess we'll see. Now, I'm getting silly questions like, did I run into Goji Tanks last night? Of course I did not. Goji Tanks is not going to buy this collection and play it. Have you not seen how Goji Tanks behaves? <laughs> Goji Tanks likely, you know, bought this on a whim years and years ago and literally only kept playing it to try to troll me. That person probably doesn't have any money. To <laughs> With the quality of their internet, do you really think that person has money? Don't you think they would have upgraded their internet in the four years that that collection was out so it was playable? I mean, come on. There's no Goji Tanks. There's no Jose. The other thing is, of course, you got to remember, I'm doing random matches. I'm doing ranked and player matches and things like that. It's not like I was sitting in an open lobby and the guy was joining or whatever, okay? Um, uh, excuse me. So, yeah, no, there's been no tro zero trolling so far. And if the thing is, if there is trolling, apparently this collection has protections in place to stop trolling. You know, you can, you can kick someone or ban someone from a room, all right? So that's good. So we'll see what happens today. All right, but I don't think, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some shout outs. All right, and then when the shout outs are done, I'm going to do some open Q&A. When the open Q&A is done, we're going to jump into fighting games because I want to play fighting games. So I'm craving fighting games because I love fighting games and I want to play fighting games. I don't want to talk all day. <clears throat> Basically, my throat's kind of shot. This all started two weeks ago. Um, when I did that react, the seven hour react day, when I just talked for seven hours straight and my throat has basically been really messed up since then and hasn't really recovered. Um, I'm sure it's not going to help that I have the air conditioner blasting all day today because it's very hot here in Washington. We're having a heat wave all weekend. So it's like, I'm not even going to get any fresh air or whatever. So it's probably going <laughs> to, it's probably going to keep bothering me. Um, there's nothing I can really do about that. So I don't want to sit here and talk for 14 hours today. I want to play fighting games. All right, I'm excited. <clears throat> okay, let's do some shout outs. We start with Snow Carl, who took the dollar fifty, talking about Am I worried about the way that this collection has been received by my audience? Support and overall, will it flop and be unable to replace Friday night streams? I like it, but I'm worried. We've played it one day and we played it for two hours multiplayer, and you're worried. I think it's time for you, Snow Carl. To do something very important all right here's what i want you to do all right you ready listen i'm serious now this is very important i want you to listen up snow carl okay so what i want you to do is i want you to <clears throat> sit down right like this wherever you're sitting i'm sure you know, make sure there's nothing around you all right nothing in the way all right i want you to stand stand up like this ready stand up okay ready now adjust your shirt all right adjust your pants just everything, so it's nice and loose and everything's nice, okay? I want you to sit slowly, slowly, not too fast, okay? Slowly. I want you to sit, right, just like this. Sit down, okay? Calmly, placing each, 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 each ass cheek as firmly and softly as you can down on your seating position, all right? Don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. It's nice. Ease it in, all right? And then what I want you to do, and I want you to lean back a little bit like this, all right? And then what I want you to do is fucking relax! 
Just relax. Thank you for the tip. Uh, Rob on Wheels tip me $5, and he says, Thank goodness for the hide chat button. I hear you. I think what Rob on Wheels is referencing, because this tip came in earlier, he's referencing the whole everyone is at each other's throats about politics and other shit, and everyone's so dramatic, and everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hear you. Like, you get to a point where it's so much that you just want to get away from it all. You're like, I don't want to be thinking about this all day. I don't want to be reading about it all day. I don't want to see people fighting with each other all day. I'm tired of it, you know? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, I agree with you. Sometimes you just need to hide the chat. But as I did say earlier, I laid down the law. I said, there will not be people derailing the chat today with that baloney. And if they do, they will be timed out and, and moderated appropriately. So no worries. I think we're going to be okay today. No drama in the chat. Okay. Okay. L Letenko has tipped me $5. He says, hey, Phil, I'm a longtime fan. I used to love your PS3 playthroughs. I know you're, you're not really a trophy hunter. But as a trophy collector myself, I want to ask if you have any platinum trophies. Much love. I have tons of platinum trophies. No, I don't. Um, I have some. Actually, on PS5, I'm not even sure where you can find that. Uh, if you even can. <laughs> Easily. Uh... uh... Trophies. <clears throat> I have 13 Platinums. 13. Not a lot. I have 13 Platinums. I have 396 Golds. 1,429 Silvers. And a whopping 6,681 Bronzes. That's a lot of bronze. <clears throat> That's like you could probably bi like build a giant statue, like that, like a Statue of Liberty, with that many bronze trophies. Um, now you say, pla how many platinum? Like, how many platinums do I have? <clears throat> I apparently I platinum the bug snacks. Wait, huh? Oh. I platinum the bug snacks, but not the expansion, the Isle of Big Snacks. But I platinum the bug snacks. I platinumed Ghost of Tsushima. <clears throat> I platinum Ghost of Tsushima. I platinumed it twice because I had it on PS4, but then I got the PS5 uh, director's cut and it carried the trophies over. So I got double trophies. I platinumed near Automata. I platinum Sly Cooper 1, the PlayStation 3 version from the HD collection released many years ago. <clears throat> I platinumed Marvel's Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I did not platinum Miles Morales. No, I did not. But I did platinum Spider-Man. <clears throat> see here. I platinumed Bloodborne. That was a fun one to platinum, actually. I liked that. It was very difficult to do so. I platinumed Batman, The Enemy Within. Yes. Was it a Telltale game? I think it was. I platinumed Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, The Telltale Series. There we go. I platinumed The Walking Dead, A New Frontier. I platinumed Batman, the original Telltale game. I platinumed, oh God, it's a long tear where I didn't platinum anything. Wow. Holy shit. What the hell? Holy fuck. Where's the platinum? I can't find any more. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. I platinumed 
Resistance Burning Skies for the PlayStation Vita. Or Vita, if you want to be hipster. I platinumed Sly Cooper 2 in the PlayStation 3 HD collection. That was the original time that I had actually played it many years ago. And that's it. So my very first Platinum ever in recorded history was Sly Cooper 2. And my very first trophy ever, the first trophy I ever earned on PlayStation 3 was... was November 7th, 2008, Recycler Bronze Trophy in Resistance 2, Defeat the Goliath in the Single Player Campaign. That was the first trophy I ever earned 14 years ago. Since then, I've earned 8,519 trophies. I'm level 424 trophy rank. <clears throat> Latenko says, thank you for checking it bit by bit like this. Much appreciated. It's more than I expected. Well, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> nothing else to do. <clears throat> thank you, Latenko, for that. Uh, thank you, Latenko, for the $5 tip. I appreciate that. Yes, I did play uh, uh, Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. I don't know if we finished it, but I remember playing it. Yes. <clears throat> All right. I think we had a super chat. We had a super chat. The super chat is from Monk, who did a tur two pound, two pounder. That's a heavy one. A two pounder super chat. He says, Phil. What was the first platinum, platinum that you ever got? Well, I just said it was, uh, oh shit, and I forgot what it was. All right, we gotta go back and look. What was it? No, I don't, I said it. What was it? What did I say it was? Sly Cooper? I don't even remember. I can't even remember what it was now. But thank you, Monk. Sly 2, is that what it was? Monk did another super chat. Thank you, Monk. Thank you for these super chats, Monk. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Sly 2 in the HD collection. Got it. My first platinum ever. Because it was like a collect-a-thon. And it was pretty fun to do, I remember. A little tedious, but it was fun. It wasn't, it wasn't unreasonable. Like some of these other Collect Quest games that are fucking ridiculous. It wasn't that bad. So I had a good time with it. Slide 2 is a great game. <clears throat> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's 12 o'clock. Meaning it's noon. We just hit noon. Um, I will open up the chat to a little bit of Q&A. We'll do that for a little bit. If it gets boring, we'll just jump right into fighting games. No dilly-dallying, no bullshit today. We're just going to kick some ass, all right? I want to whoop some fucking ass today. I want to take the ass, and go, uh, 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 just like this. Uh, uh, uh. Repeated spankings. But do you guys have any questions first before we get to that? Eternal says, is the key to happiness remaining a child at heart? Yes. And as you remain a child at heart, any time that you don't get what you want immediately you know, instant gratification. You stamp your feet, you cry, you whine, you wail, snot running down your face, ripping your shirt apart, spitting, cursing, kicking people's shins, just like a child. That's the way to succeed at life. SD Charger says, what I consider Hotline Miami 2 on PS Plus, pro possibly if it's on there. I think it is, right? I know I played Hotline Miami 1. I don't think I ever played 2, right? <clears throat> okay. Um... Shout out to Genesis Gaming, who just re-upped his membership for five months. Thank you, Genesis Gaming, for the ongoing support. He says, thank you for three months of fun. Can you help me cool down? Currently, I'm melting in 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, what do people do when it's hot and you, if you don't have air conditioning? Go to the mall? Go to the movie theater? In this case, if it's very hot, okay, and... Uh, excuse me. Uh, wow, double burp. Excuse me, excuse me. If it's very hot and you don't have air conditioning, maybe it's actually worth it to pay the $72 for a movie ticket. I know that, you know, prices have, you know, skyrocketed exorbitantly since the pandemic in particular. They're really trying to make up for the, the year of loss there. 
but you know, $72 is a, is a fair trade for some nice cooling air, right? <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> oh, itchy. Ah! Austin says, "What? Car, which car do I have? The one that I'm driving. That's the one that I have. I'm not currently driving any cars that I'm, I don't own. So there you go. Darkness says, drench your t-shirt in water and wear it. It works if it's seriously unbearable. There you go. That's a strategy. Get some cold water, right? No sleep, real vibes. He says, if we play each other today, don't kick his ass too much. Give him a fighting chance. All right. I will... I'll pick an older version of a character. And I will only use two buttons. There you go. <laughs> Cold water in a fan work, says Joe Man. Xander Cruz says, do you have any old joysticks from any tournaments? Um, I still have my PlayStation 2 joysticks from way back in the day. Some of them. They're over here inside of my... Actually, let me think about that. I think I have one PlayStation 2 stick in there. I could be wrong. I haven't opened that thing in years. But all my joysticks from back when Street Fighter 4 came out. So we're talking like 2009, 2010. I have a few of those sticks still in there. So those would be Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 sticks. I'm pretty sure they're still in there. Um, I have no idea if they work. I haven't used them in years. And eventually I'm probably going to just throw them out. Because what do you use them for? No one, you know, there's not even fighting games being played actively on those consoles. Right? So... But I do have some of them, I think. And some of those had really nice artwork and everything on them. That was back in the day when Street Fighter 4 blew up. And all these different gaming companies started coming out with joysticks. There was Hori. There was Mad Cats. There was like 10 different companies all putting out gameplay joysticks, peripherals, game pads. And I had quite a few of them. So, show them off one day. If we ever do that special, and people have been talking about, Phil, will you do an event where you, where you look through your closet, right? If we ever do that, maybe we would also do the Ottoman. And I would show you the joysticks in there. I would be I would not be opposed to doing that. They're they're basically like no value. They're they're outdated peripherals for consoles no one plays fighting games on, so they, they have zero value. <laughs> well, I replay Castlevania without save states. No. I will not do that. You're wasting my time. <clears throat> okay. All right. Dan Dawson says, I'm sure they'd add value to someone or have value to someone. They, they would cost more to ship than anything. That's the thing. Like, I know personally from experience, <clears throat> from T-shirts and other things that I have shipped. Remember, I used to do the Hardcore Gaming Season giveaway, and I would give away games. I would give away collector's edition content. I would give away other things. It would cost way more to ship the item than what the value of the item was. And in some cases, I'd be shipping a game that would cost me 30, 40 bucks to ship it to someone. And the game was worth like 10 bucks. You know, it, shipping cost is exorbitant and it's not gone down at all. Um, unless you have a big logistics uh, arrangement. Like Amazon can ship things for pennies on the dollar because they have fucking warehouses everywhere. They have a whole network of people who are couriers who drive their shit around. So for them, shipping costs is nothing. But for a common person to ship something, it's incredibly expensive. And especially these joysticks, they're big. You'd have to package them. The box dimensions would make it expensive. They, there's no value there. There's literally no value there. <clears throat> are Pop-Tarts ravioli? No, Pop-Tarts are disgusting. They're, they're like, you know, barely food. I wouldn't even call them food. I would call them, I would call Pop-Tarts stomach fillers. If you absolutely need to put something in your stomach so it'll stop hurting from not having food in there, you eat a Pop-Tart. But you might as well, I mean, you could eat the paint off the wall. You could eat this Lego sculpture. It, it probably would serve the same purpose. It's just the stomach filler. There's no nutritional value. There's no taste of anything that's good. It's just like, you know, you might as well suck the varnish off off wood. It's the same same deal. Would I consider playing Death Stranding Director's Cut? No. I've already played through the game. I've seen the story. That's the best part of the game. I have no desire to play that gameplay again. It sucks. No, I do not currently sell merchandise. I have plans that possibly I will sell merchandise again 
maybe even later this year during the busy holiday season when people would be looking to purchase said merchandise. I'm taking a break from doing that after major trolling activities last year where people tried to get me banned from the internet. It did not work. Uh, I'm still here, as you can see. But I rebranded this year. You know, I'm no longer any kind of negative moniker or anything like that. I renamed my website. I renamed my, my, my channels and everything. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, now, when I make a new line of merchandise, right, I can rebrand myself as something positive and fun and interesting rather than people trying to say hurtful, herp, 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 hurtful, negative, harmful things about me that aren't true. There we go. So, maybe later this year we'll look into it. We'll see. The thing is, there's so many businesses that do this now. When I, when I became a full-time streamer in 2017, there were very few. So I jumped into Teespring because it was like the no-brainer. They had reached out to me, and they were working with me to design merch and shit. You know, fast forward to today, now there's like 10, 20 different places you can go to make your own merch online, and it's cost-free. So we'd actually have to. We have we actually have options to compare. Like, do I want to go with this one or this one? I don't know, because I have to look online and do research to say who's good, you know? It's good to have options. Did I go to the dentist recently? I go to the dentist every day. You might not realize this. That's why I tell you guys I don't have time. I'm a very busy individual. I go to the dentist every day. I'm over there like crazy. I love it when he drills. Oh, that's the best feeling. When a dentist is just drilling right into your cavity. He's like, ah, oh, yes, yes. There's blood squirting. I love it. Okay, excuse me. Got a little carried away. <clears throat> Would I consider playing the original Final Fantasy VII? Yes. I would. In fact, I wanted to do that years ago before the Final Fantasy VII remake came out. And people told me, no, play Final Fantasy IX. So I did, and I never played the original. I would play Final Fantasy VII if you guys wanted it. I'd be down for that this summer. That could be the summer playthrough. The summer RPG playthrough could be Final Fantasy VII. I would be 100% on board for that. We just got to figure out what's the best version. Isn't it both on Game Pass and PlayStation Plus? So I guess we have to figure out what's the better one. <clears throat> Monkey D. Luvi says, if I had to go back to school, what kind of degree would I get? I'd get the one that allows me to avoid stupid questions. That'd be the best one. Like the, the, the question dodging degree. So when you say stupid, pointless question, say, whoa, he made your stuff right over my head, and I don't have to answer it. It's beautiful. <clears throat> Would I go back to Hollow Knight if people requested it? Yes. Am I going to play, replay Resident Evil 4 remake? I'm going to play the remake when it comes out next year. Yes. Would I make a figure of myself via U2s? Like other content creators, I would buy it. I don't even know what that is. They have a way to make an action figure of yourself? That would be insane. Imagine me, this asshole, as an action figure. And all the things you could do with it. All the places you could shove it. Maybe we should do it. What do you guys think? Maybe th maybe like, it'll be one of the major, the big merchandise line push later this year. By the Dark Side Phil shirt, the Dark Side Phil hat, the Dark Side Phil mug, the Dark Side Phil underpants, the Dark Side Phil action figure that you put in your underpants. We can do the whole product line. DSP gaming out the ass. I'd be down for that. That sounds good. <clears throat> am I going to replay Resident Evil 8 in third person? Fuck no. I am going to play the expansion, but I'm not replaying the game. In 40 years, what will people be nostalgic for? Things from the past. That's what I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Will there be a pocket in the underpants for the figure? Will most underwear have a slit in the front for guys? So you could shove the figure in there. You could just have the DSP action figure always in your pee pee slit of your underpants all the time. And it'll be nice and slug to your slug. Nice and snug to your crotch. Far be it for me to tell you what you do with the merch once you buy it. I can't control that. <clears throat> Will I do an OnlyFans? No. I don't 
do what everyone else does. As you know, I go against the grain. I'm the ultimate hipster in that regard. I don't like what's popular. I'm going to do an only haters. A so exclusive paid for video service only for my haters. You never thought of that, did you? Now you're thinking outside the box. There you go. Only haters. I know I would make so much money because my my haters are so stupid. They would pay. I'm not dumb. I know. <laughs> they do it every day on the streams. Why wouldn't they do it on the video service? I know. They're that stupid. <clears throat> Parasolo says, ever had a TV show you were heavily invested in and ended up disappointed with? Lost. Everyone answers the same thing. Lost. Started off good. First two, three seasons were amazing. And then when they started to answer the questions the answers were more confusing than the, than the fucking questions themselves and the game the show just terrible the ending was one of the worst i've ever seen what a joke <clears throat> would i be excited for a marvelous cow count to remake for current consoles yes but if it but only if it was not made by digital eclipse i just don't have confidence that Digital Eclipse can make any kind of a game collection with online capabilities that works. <clears throat> the 30th anniversary collection was such a joke. I don't believe they could do a good job. So I don't want them having that power over the MVC2 reboot or, you know, reawakening. I feel like they would fuck it up. I want another company to do it. I'm curious. I just want to check and see how many members we have. Because we did have a few members. Someone just joined, I think. I want to see how many members we have. Um, oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Excuse me. That was really disgusting. I'm sorry, everybody. We are at 545, so we lost a bunch of members this morning. I thought as much. Shout out to... Keys... 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 K. I can't pronounce that name. Thank you for that. But we're at 545. We lost a bunch. It sure would be great we get some of those back. <clears throat> if, you're, if your membership expired today and you didn't renew it, shame on you. Big shame. Shame, shame, shame. How dare you let your membership expire? Everyone knows that a membership to DSP Gaming is the most important thing today. Anything else going on in your life, drop. Forget it. You need to spend money on rent? Fuck that. Who needs to live in a place? Fuck that. Go outside. Use the satellite internet. You don't need a roof over your head. You need food? Fuck food. Eat a Pop-Tart, like I talked about. Or eat the paint off the wall. The suck the varnish. Pay for the membership. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Obviously. The, f the sad part about that is, after that segment, I have to say, I'm joking. I'm, I'm not being serious. Because if I don't, people will actually say, oh, I'll see what Phil said. I have to say I'm a joke. I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. Or maybe I'm not. But I am. Okay. Yikes. What's my favorite Tarantino movie? Probably what, or Reservoir Dogs. It pretty much has like the craziest dialogue of any movie ever. It has the most in interesting conversations that have nothing to do with what's going on in the movie. And it has some t crazy twists and shit. So I'm going to go with that. Have I lost faith in CD Projekt Red? I mean, in my opinion, they had one really good game, which are three, and one really bad game, Cyberpunk. So let's see what they do next. You do good, you do bad, it kind of evens out. So let's let's give them an honest chance to pump out something else good. <clears throat> That's my feelings. Favorite desert? Um, the Sahara. The Sahara is my favorite desert. Any plans on attending gaming events? No. No. Maybe eventually, long term. Right now, no. <clears throat> I think right now we're on a good pattern or a good trend. I think in the last one to two years, I've seen a more of a reinvigoration of positivity towards me and my channels and my content, right? DSP Gaming in the last year that I've come back to this channel fully has been growing, which is a good thing. And I think that if I stick with it and I'm dedicated... I rebranded like I did, and we stick with that. Maybe, again, later this year, you can have a rebranding with merchandise and other things. Maybe then long-term, 
I could actually get enough people who like me to warrant me going to an event. But the chances of that happening now, you know, are no, are slim to none. Maybe maybe in the long term I would consider. I mean, I do live in Seattle. And there's many events that happen in Seattle. <clears throat> and the threat of COVID is finally waning. So now would be the time to possibly, you know, start thinking about stuff like that. But not yet. I can't do it yet. Um, like I said, at this point, I would love by the end of this year to do some fundraising and upgrade all my setup so that I, I basically have better stuff going on here for my streams. And then I can worry about the future with the other stuff. But for now, I can't do that. I can't take any time out to do anything. Right now, I got to keep working, man. When and how long did I listen to Howard Stern? Um, sporadically back in the day when he was on terrestrial radio. And then when he went to satellite radio, I wa I listened like two years, I would say. Because when he went to satellite radio is when I got satellite radio in my car. Uh, it had come along with a stereo that I had actually bought for my Grand Dam at the time. And so I listened to him for about two years in the Grand Dam. And then when I got rid of the Grand Dam, I never got satellite radio in my next car. So that was it. So 2013, 2012, 2012, 2012 was when I stopped. So I probably started listening to him. In the mid-2000s, I got a satellite radio in my car. And probably uh, several years there, maybe three, four years, I was listening to him nonstop. And then I dropped it in 2012. <clears throat> okay. No Sleep Real Vibes? I've played the AVGN video game. We played it. For a Christmas marathon one year. So yes, I'm well aware. Alright. Shit fuck just took me a dollar fifty and says shit fuck, shit fuck, shit fuck, shit fuck, shit fuck. Well shit. Thanks for the fucking tip. Appreciate it. Very original. <laughs> What fight stick would I recommend? I like Hori fighting sticks, but just like any other peripheral company, they do have various, <clears throat> excuse me, various levels of quality. They have had lower end products that are cheap that aren't very good, and then higher end products that are more expensive but very good. I have been using the Hori Real Arcade Pro 4 since the release of the beta of Street Fighter 5, which was what, 2016? Is it 2016? Was it 2015? I think the beta came out summer of 2016 and the actual game came out early 2017. Is that correct? Or am I a year off? Was it the beta was the summer of 2015 and the game released 2016? Whichever it may be, I've been using this joystick for every fighting game on PlayStation since then, and it's fine. It's beautiful. Now, it was expensive. At the time when I bought it, it was like $150, $160 or something like that. Okay? Um, but it's held up. I don't have issues with it. The only complaint I have is that on the back, it tarnished on the sides. Do you see on the sides of the joystick, there's some tarnish because it's a metal bottom? There's nothing you can do about that. Any metal joystick will do that. But outside of that, it's comfortable. It still works perfectly fine for every game. It has not broken down or anything. Okay? So that's what I recommend for PlayStation. Uh, on Xbox, a fan out of the blue... And out of the kindness of their heart, unsolicited, sent me a, a Hori Fighting Stick Alpha for Christmas as a Christmas present. And I've been using that on the Xbox, and that joystick's really good. So, there you go. I don't, I don't think you can buy this anymore. This is very outdated. I believe there's newer models of this stick you can now buy. But, you know, I'm using the one from years and years ago. But the Fighting Stick Alpha is a current one for the Xbox. <clears throat> okay. Rob on wheels to another $50 says, time to play the game. So Rob wants me to stop with the pre-stream, stop with the chit-chat, stop with the bullshit, and start playing video games. Sounds like good advice. Thank you, Rob. Geodudism has just tipped me $10, and that is the biggest tip of the day. Let's get Geodudism up on the leaderboard. Geodudism. Geodude, Geodudism. Thank you, Geodudism. Any final questions? Do I think Street Fighter VI would be a regular rotational game if I enjoy it? Yes. Why not? Why would it not be? If I enjoy it as much as old school fighting games, why would I not play it all the time? Right? 
Nigo says, do you think it's better for someone that wants to be more competitive in fighting games to switch to a fighting stick or is a controller good enough? It really depends on the game because you're playing old school fighting games. The inputs are very, very strict. So if you're playing an old school fighting game, you probably want to have a joystick because the joystick is the most precise kind of input, especially if you have button inputs that need to be multiple buttons at once, then a joystick really makes sense. But if you're playing a modern game, usually the show... They, if you're playing a modern fighting game, usually the inputs are very lax and there's a lot of shortcuts and ways around it, like mapping buttons and things, so you really don't have to have a really complex joystick where you have to hit multiple buttons at a time or do these complex motions. Most of the time, you can just double tap or do shortcuts and then they come out anyway, so a joystick is perfectly fine for older games, but you don't really need one for modern games. Darkness says, would I review items from around the house? No. If I did that, everyone who's a nasty, nasty, nasty on the internet would be nasty, nasty and would use anything that they see in my house as a way to insult me, defame me, hurt me, slander me. For example, let's say for example, okay, I walk out into the hallway and in the hallway, um... In my, in my front hallway, okay, let's say that there's a, a coat rack, okay? What they would do is they would freeze frame on that coat rack, that blurry, blurry coat rack, and they would micro-analyze it, and they would find a little emblem on the coat rack, and they would, they would use data rebuilding, like, like you know how the, uh, the FBI or the CIA or any of those intelligence agencies, they could take a blurry picture, a pixelized picture, and they could rebuild it to be high definition through very complex artificial intelligence. They can assume what it really looks like when it's sharp, right? So they would enhance the image and rebuild it using AI to see the logo on the coat rack to reveal that this coat rack is actually a $10,000 rare redwood coat rack handmade by artisans okay you're only one of a kind coat rack specially designed just for me all right and they would find on the internet point of sale receipts to prove that it was me right they'd even they'd, they'd somehow link it to my debit card and they'd reveal my debit card number to the internet and they would say phil bought this coat rack with this debit card on this date, from this artisan coat rack designer. And here's all the receipts, and here's the evidence of what he does with all the contributions he gets on his streams. <clears throat> okay? Now, it'll be 100% bullshit, but it won't matter. That's what these idiots do. You give them an inch, and they take, like, half the planet. You see? So, <clears throat> I'm not going to fuck with these idiots, and I'm not going to give them anything to work with. I'm not. Everything that you see in my office is my, my, my streams, my content. This is what you get. Outside of this office, that's my personal life, and that has none, none of your business. And I hate to do that because, you know, I used to be the opposite. I used to be the guy who would walk around his, his house with his camcorder. I would do vlog, home vlogs, holiday vlogs. <clears throat> Shit, I would do DSP Tries It once a week, and you'd see my kitchen, you'd see my dining room, you'd see stuff from all over the house, right? If you haven't noticed, I haven't done that in many, many years. I'm just not going to. Everything will be here, and that way, there's no risk of any kind of shit being thrown. I'm just tired of it, you know? I don't want to be covered in shit anymore. I'm tired, Especially this year, I'm trying to rebrand again. I'm trying to separate myself from the insane negativity. Let their, all the crazy, insane negativity shit that they've said be shit from the past. If you haven't noticed this year, there's they, they got nothing. They got nothing to talk about. So... When they get a scrap of anything, they blow it up like it's something important when it has nothing to do with anything. It's not important or it's fake. And I don't address it, and then we move on positively. And that's that's how I've really approached things this year, and it's worked really well. And, uh, you know, I'm just not going to chance anything. There's no point in me taking a single frame of anything from outside of this room, okay? Snow Carl to the dollar fifty says, please answer me seriously. Who would you say are your three most intelligent chat regulars? I took a shit in my hand at the $1.50 and says, have you shit in your hand? Not intentionally. 
And Rob on wheels through the dollar fifty. He says, "Come on, man, get to the games." All right, Rob really wants me to get to the games. He's upset with me. <clears throat> okay, shall we get to the games? Play for about an hour, a little over. Multiplayer. Gonna take a break, then come back. I really hope we can find consistent matches today. All right, everyone, thank you. We have 70 likes on the stream. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the membership. Thank you for the couple of super chats. Thank you for the tips. Thank you for the views. Thank you for your time. Let's end the pre-stream and let's beat the shit out of people online. How does that sound? The whole purpose of my stream today is to fucking beat people up. Don't you love that? Don't you love you can say that and get away with it? <clears throat> How, when, when else can you say that? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's end the pre-stream. Here we go. Shit, my mouse.